Now, you're going to think some of this stuff is cool, but I want you to remember, none of this, this, this discipling people and then teaching them to pass it on to others, this was not my idea, right? This was Jesus' idea. Okay, Jesus knows a thing or two, you know, about um, the church and about his mission and what he has. So, so um, just take that in mind. This is what he said to do, and so we should do it even if we don't understand how this all works out or what the benefits are. We should just do this because um, he's the king. But yeah, um, how many of you guys have ever heard of uh, Dawson Trotman? Okay, founder of the Navigators. Raise your hand if you've heard of the Navigators. Okay, well, Dawson Trotman founded the, the Navigators. I don't know too much about, I've, I, I definitely knew of the Navigators. I was blessed by them when I was a young, younger, young adult, te- teens and 20s. Um, Navigators does great stuff. Um, Billy Graham, raise your hand if you ever heard of Billy Graham. Okay, most people in this room have heard of him, uh, the, the, the most well-known evangelist in the world um, of the last century. Um, uh, Billy Graham begged Dawson Trotman to help him out. Billy Graham was kept up at night, nights went sleepless nights, um, thinking about his converts that weren't being discipled. And it was a, um, a, a real source of grief to Billy Graham and something that really was on his heart that he's, God was using him and thousands of people were coming to Christ, 6,000 on average through, through um, each month of his ministry. Um, 6,000 people a month coming to Christ all over the world, um, China, different countries that he'd go and get invitations to speak, and he would have to leave, and who, who was discipling him? And, and he, Dawson Trotman was, uh, in, in the last generation, was all about discipling people, okay? And uh, Billy Graham grabbed Dawson Trotman, by, begged Dawson Trotman to help him join with his ministry, and Dawson Trotman wouldn't do it. Uh, he says, I, I'm discipling one guy right now, or two guys. I work with small groups. I I need to give them a couple years and pass. Then they, I can't go. I can't work with thousands. This, this discipleship thing is by nature a one-on-one or one-on-two. Jesus was able to do it full-time, so he had 12 at one time. But most of us have to work jobs, you know. So, um, you know, it's a sm- small group thing. And, um, and uh, Billy Graham um, begged Dawson Trotman to help him. Um, and eventually they did um, do some kind of collaboration um, but so we're talking about Dawson Trotman now, and I'm stealing some of this from, from him. But okay, so, uh, so let's say this is me. In year, this is, this is going to be me up here. Or you. It doesn't really matter who it is. Okay? All right. Now this is going to be year one, year two, year three, and year four. Okay, somewhat similar to that. But all right. Uh, let me look at my drawing here, make sure I get this right. Okay, all right, so let's say year number one, I disciple a guy named Alex. I just put my arm around him, teach him Jesus' commands, teach him how to follow Jesus, how Jesus taught us to live. Okay, year number one, I disciple Alex for a year. All right, this is going to be Alex. All right, then year number two, I disciple Bobby. Okay. Like I said, I don't care. Spend as many t- years as you, you want with a person. This is just for the sake of illustration. Year number three. Okay, we'll, we'll call him Bobby. All right. See, I, I deci- year number three, I disciple Charlie. Okay. Alex, Bobby, and Charlie. All right, and then year number four, I disciple Daniel. We'll call him Danny. Okay, everybody with me so far? So after four years, I've, dis- I've invested in four people. I've discipled four people. Okay, all right. Now, Alex, when he's done being discipled, what does he need to do? Yeah, he needs to disciple someone else. And the first step in doing that, when you're, you're first wanting to be obedient to that, you know what you do? You pray. Because you got to have some God bring you somebody that's willing to be discipled by you. And so the first step is just Praying. That's the first step of obedience to discipling people is praying. God, would you send me a man? Would you send me a young woman? I'm available to you. Will you send me? Okay, and that's part of pursuing obedience. Obedience doesn't mean you sit back on your heels and wait someone to knock on your door and ask you to be discipled. Okay, that'd be like me waiting on my, Jesus telling me to honor my father and mother and me waiting in my bedroom for my mom and dad to come over and knock on the door so I'd have somebody to honor. <laughs> obedience is active, right? If we want to pursue obedience, which is what we're told in Scripture, do First Peter, Second Peter chapter 1, pursue righteousness, pursue godliness, pursue love, pursue faith. You know, obedience is, is active. It's going after it. Um, and so 
obedience to discipling people should be active. And me, I've been trying to pursue obedience to this instruction for about four or five years now. You know how many people I've discipled? Zero. God hasn't given me somebody yet. So what, what has my obedience looked like? My obedience has looked like me pleading with the Lord to send me somebody so I can disciple them. And I'm still waiting for God to bring me my person. So, um, but at any rate, yeah, when Alex gets done, he needs to get on his knees and be seeking God for that person that God has for him to pass it on to, okay? And he can actually start that while he's being discipled, too. You don't have to wait to, to, to start that. But okay, let's say um, year number two, um, Alex has somebody to disciple, and so he disciples somebody named Billy. All right? He disciples Billy. Praise his God. God gave him a man that's, that's done messing around and really wants to get serious following Jesus. All right? He disciples Billy. Um, then, year three, Alex, uh, Billy's ready to go on. Okay, and this is hypothetical. Billy might need six years. Who knows? You know, it depends. If he was grew up in church, he might need six months, and he's ready to go. He just needs just some confidence, you know, and to figure out what this is, that he can do it. But, uh, you know, so it depends. But let's just assume Billy's ready. He goes on and disciples Chad. Okay, God brings him another man. Young man. Okay, and then year four, he disciples Donnie. Okay, is that clear so far? Raise your hand if you're still with me, if I haven't confused you yet. Totally. Okay, all right. Because it might get kind of messy up here if I'm at the helm trying to, to draw this. I should have had Trudy or somebody good at artwork come up. All right. But now, I'm just going to add this in now. What can also be happening um, is uh, Billy, during year three, what could Billy be doing? Yeah, he could be discipling somebody, praying, and God would send somebody during year two. He could be praying. And if God sends him somebody, then yeah, Billy in year two can disciple somebody. Let's say he does. He disciples somebody named... Um, Chuck. All right? So Billy disciples Chuck in year three. All right, then in year four, Billy can disciple somebody too named, I don't know. It has to start with a D. Douglas, thank you very much. There we go. All right, and then Chad, Chad got in on year three under Alex. Who, Chad can be doing somebody in year four, right? So who's Chad's guy? What's his name going to be? It's got to be with a D. David. David, thank you very much. Okay. All right. And then Chuck, the, the last, the, well, Billy's first guy that he discipled, Chuck might be ready in year four to do his first guy ever. You know, maybe something that before Chuck started with him, he never thought he'd be able to do, but he's stepping out and doing it. And so we need one more D name. Derek, okay. Okay. All right, now on this side, Bobby, who was the second guy I discipled my second year, that was all Alex over here. Bobby might disciple somebody, right? All right, and uh, then in year uh, four, Bobby's guy might take somebody, right? And, um, and then Bobby might himself take a, a, his second guy, Okay, in year four, Charlie might take his first guy. Okay, and then I'm still working with Danny in year four. All right, so this is Dawson Trot Trotman's illustration. If everybody does it this way, after th 31 years, after 31 years, guess, guess how many people will have been discipled? And I know this is purely the theoretical. Eight billion people, more than the entire world's population. Literally all the people in every single people group would be discipled in 31 years. Now that's theoretical, and that, that assumes God's work to save people and, that, and bring them to that point where they want to be discipled, and that they all only need one year. And so some of them, like I said, you might need four years, so I'll just throw that out. But I thought that was an interesting analogy, that, that the entire world could be discipled in one lifetime if, if a generation would get on board with actually doing this. But we don't normally. We just get so busy with our own ideas about what we can do to build our church, right? And, and, and then we don't really disciple people, and each new generation has to figure it out on their own. Um, but if one generation catches a vision for discipleship, it could change the world. So, okay, um, another thing that Dawson Trotman says is, uh, 
another reason why you don't want to get too hung up on numbers and timetables and that kind of thing is, uh, let's say you do this, you get reach all 8 billion people, but let's say you didn't give enough time to Alex, your first guy. Maybe you only gave him one year, and really he could have used two years. Okay, guess what? If Alex washes out and never passes it on, you just lost four billion out of your eight billion. Okay? Four billion out of your eight billion because Alex washed out. Okay? So you want to give this person your, I'll start by saying, your first person is the most important person. And then when he's up to speed, guess who your most important person is? <laughs> your second person is your most important person, right? They're all important, but that just shows you why, um, how, that, how that works. The goal is not to pad your numbers. You can come to the end of your life and say, I discipled 16 people, and now they're involved in discipling 400,000 other people. That's not the goal in life. This isn't to, we don't, we're not trying to get ribbons and impress people, right? The goal is to disciple somebody well, and with different people, it might take longer. Um, so, okay. Um, one last thing that I'll make with this, with this illustration is, uh, let's say you just disciple Alex. You just disciple Alex, and then you die. You get hit by a car. Guess what? As long as Alex caught the vision, he could still reach four billion people. I'm not going to draw all Alex's red guys in there. <laughs> but, okay. So, or you might be in a state where you know you don't have 31 years left to your life. But you might disciple somebody that does. Now, all it takes is one, and you could change the world even through that one. Right? So, okay, that was the tree illustration.